2018 National Dodgeball Tournament. We have Bowling Green State University versus Townsend University. A really strong matchup. I'm liking this Townsend team. Alex, what did you see? I know we we're working with our, uh, with our technical difficulties, but what are you liking so far about this team? For these teams? Uh, I, like I said, Bowling Green State is one that I've gotten to play against before, and I really like playing against them. Um, they're a team that, I, to the best of my knowledge, no one really has any issues with them. They don't really have any kind of a storied history like some of the teams have. Um, but again, similar to Western, they've been a very inconsistent team. They've you know, had very good seasons, very bad seasons. Um, obviously, I'm not at all familiar with this team, but based on what I just saw from Townsend, uh, this should be a very easy win for Townsend. Um, Look, look at how aggressive they are on this start off. You, you, were, you, you, you made an interesting point there. Um, a lot of teams can build up a reputation over just one season as far as being, like, very early on, especially when we were playing five, six, seven years ago, this was almost exclusively an honor system because there were so few refs at the time. And so you got to build up a reputation as being a very honorable team who, if you got hit, you got out. Um, and in the same way, I think Bowling Green is an incredibly honorable team, and they have kept that reputation throughout the last few years. I would agree with that. Um, now, I think what we are going to start to see, and this will be an issue tomorrow as well, and I think we've already noticed it a couple of times today, the farther into the day we get, we're getting more injuries, we're getting some kind of, I think people are getting a little more stressed, people are winning and are losing, the tension's high. These are the games where we're maybe going to start seeing some a little more aggression, and not tactical aggression, but aggression aggression, uh, which is unfortunate, but it's part of the sport. But uh, that's a big part of Oh, wow, that was a very close dodge there. Uh, being able to keep a level head will be very important. And, uh, to your point, I think that's one thing that BGSU does a very good job with. Um, I li I'm liking what I'm seeing from Bowling Green State in this far right corner. Whenever the uh, Townsend team is really aggressive, you'll see them get into what we like to call a pod where a group of people will get behind one. Generally speaking, as long as you keep your foot in bounds, you can get three players behind one blocker and have a pretty good chance of blocking the ball. So you can see this, this right flank over here of Bowling and Straight is now going really aggressive. And unfortunately, number uh, 19, Smith, did get a catch off of that. And it's because Bowling Green did not throw together. It was all one person throwing, and that is why uh, he was managed to get that catch. Ooh, number 20, almost. Look at, look at how aggressive Townsend is. As soon as a ball is thrown, even, you know, right now there's not a huge man advantage for them. Uh, the balls are relatively evenly distributed. But as soon as, uh, watch, watch after BGSU makes this, uh, t makes this push. Watch how quickly Townsend will be back on. Wow. Um, that was not a catch because it hit ball first. So it, uh, while it looked like a catch, we did hear the skid of the ball. So it was definitely a block, and it's a dead ball. As soon as it hits one other ball, it's dead. You cannot make a catch. The Townsend doing some juggling around. Sometimes, depending on if you're righty or lefty, you get a throw from one different direction. It, it means more, a little more powerful. I think uh, one of the things, Townsend is another one of the teams that instead of using their actual names on their jerseys, they do, in fact, use nicknames. So, Danimal. So, for example, this gentleman here, we're not calling him Bald Eagle. He's calling him <laughs> Bald Eagle. So I don't want anyone to accuse us of being uh, hurt. So. We got a few. We got, we've got some. I got a Neymar Jr., uh, a Charlie Brown, which is, is something that I like. Scrub. Scrub 2. I like scrub Danimal. The, scrub 2, the scrubbing. <laughs> Oh boy! Look, look how fast. And the thing that is that's separating them from WKU is they, when they are counterattacking, are getting all the way up the court, and that is so important so you, you don't have as much space. Now, Woo! I, I want to try to watch for it next game because something that you talked about uh, during the last WK game we watched was people that are able to play. I guess what I would call an aggressive defense. And Ball Eagle um, for Townsend is definitely one of those players. So I'll try to get some shots of him next game. I've been following a little bit of this one, but I want, I, want to, I want people to watch and understand when we talk about a team that needs to play aggressive defense, how you play that. So here we go, big push big for counter. BGSU. 
and they get nothing off of it. It's the problem was our right hand side over here, off to the off to the right. Alex, we have three balls over there, and they did not throw a single one. So yeah, they got everybody back from Townsend, but they didn't get a kill. And it's so important that you at least throw one of those three balls. And la last push, they just they just held on them. So they're holding on to them, which is great. But you gotta throw. You gotta make a cross. You gotta put some pressure on the field. Ooh, we have a catch. Wow, nice catch there. Brown. Zero's out, he called it. So. Every once in a while, even even people up here have to call some plays. <laughs> There's just not enough refs, ladies and gentlemen, to catch everything right now at this current stage in our game. But, heck, we're getting much better, especially, like I said, an original club sport is just an honor system. So. How many people Townsend still has on the court? Uh, Bowling, Green, uh, Bowling Green's looking a little scared, I think. I think they have 12 is what I just counted. Ooh, uh, there's another one down, number 79 for Bowling Green. Oh, and another one, 36. Just not paying attention. Sometimes that's where you can get an advantage if someone's picking up a ball. You have to use peripheral vision when you're picking up a ball so that you can dodge. Even with uh, Townsend having the man advantage, I'm impressed with how aggressive uh, BGSU is still going. They're still pushing up to the midcourt line. They're not hanging back and, you know, just making their one kind of low, low angle throw. They're actually, they're still putting some pressure on the, on, on Townsend. I'm impressed. And that's what you got to do. They're not playing scared and they shouldn't because it's a game that isn't that painful. I know these people are throwing really fast. I believe, I don't know if I've said it on stream, but I've talked about it earlier today. The fastest throw that we recorded when we had a, we had a radar gun about four or five years ago. A, a UK player threw it 82 miles an hour. But you got to think, an 82-mile dodgeball throw is not going to hurt as bad as an 82-mile baseball throw just because of the amount of space that the, the, the impact is going to hit. Is it going to hurt a little bit? Yes. So to that same point, there are people that have been hit in the head and knocked out. So it is still a painful sport. But and, but you, you uh, folks, you, gotta, you do not want to aim for the head. It's a very small thing to try to hit. Most of the time you are either aiming for the feet because it's much harder to, to, uh, to hit or you're aiming for the side. You really want to get them when they're not looking and that is a little bit easier to do as, as 15 on 15 happens. Yeah, we're, seeing a little, we're seeing a little bit of kind of stress, I think, a little bit of aggravation from some of the BGSU players and that's what I was talking about earlier. It's been a long day, people are tired, they're sore. This is when people are going to start, you know, kind of letting their emotions take over. And I hope it's entertaining. For for us. For TMZ. <laughs> yes, it is TMZ. Their meltdowns will mean our pleasure and happiness you and laughter. On the YouTube. <laughs> I want at least a hundred views. All right, eight minutes, thirty seconds left on the clock. Uh, Townsend with a big advantage here. You know, funny enough, uh, one of the, the YouTube videos that we did have with um, UK versus WKU, a UK player did a flip, got on Tosh.0, oh. hey, it's on Center too, did it really get on SportsCenter? Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay, it definitely got on Tosh.0 oh because he did, a, he did a dodgeball, he was in playing dodgeball against WKU, did a flip, landed on the back of his head, was not a pretty picture, but ended up being all right, I think he had a minor concussion, that's about it, so, I, I mean... This sport is just not as dangerous as people would probably assume that it is, which is nice. All right, so BGSU still putting pressure on both halves of the court, but it's getting to the point where there's just too many angles to watch for them. But uh, they're doing a good job lasting. But again, you have to ask, is it worth dragging this out? Currently, Townsend has one. They have zero. Look at the advantage. Look at the man advantage that Townsend's got. This is going to be a tough one to overcome. Uh, you know, in seven minutes, do you think they can? Do you, do you do you think it's still possible for BGSU to win this point? No, but is it possible them to outlast the half? Maybe. I mean, that's that's not a fun prospect. Cause seven minutes of dodgeball. I know it doesn't look like they're running very hard, but every time you throw, you exert a lot of energy, and it can get very tiring. Um, and your head's going back and forth and back and forth, and there's a lot of adrenaline running through your, your body. Seven minutes of this game is very, it's very exhausting. I know they're standing around a little bit, but it's because there's more people on the court, so they don't have to throw every, every 10 seconds. 
you've been in a couple games where you've been the last man standing, haven't you, Alex? Is that that's not fun, is it? it there's nothing fun about it. Um, because you've got some of your teammates that are yelling at you like, go, get a catch, get me back in the game. And you've got other people that are telling you, you know, if there's a timeout called for BGSU, I believe. Yep. Yeah, you've got other members of the team that are yelling at you to, you know, just turtle up and last out the round. Uh, but, yeah, it's a very stressful situation to be in. Plus, you're one person and there are ten balls. And you can, yeah, you might have three or four that are sitting idly on your side, but it's still... It's not a fun prospect to watch out for all of those. People put their hand behind their back, and then you can't tell what they if they have a ball or not, and you just have to sit. You're a sitting duck. It's it's like shooting fish in a barrel um, when you're the last man standing. But uh, fortunately for us, BGSU does not only have one member. They have at least five. Uh, I think a captain's talking to them. So they have five. So they can outlast if they are smart about the next six and a half minutes, and, and they can get away with only a 1-0 uh, deficit at half, which would be pretty darn big for them, to be honest. And, I mean, the other advantage of that is um, with that much time left, if you turtle up and you force these Townsend players to throw and throw and throw and throw and throw, they're going to wear themselves out. Um, you know, it's kind of like a rope-a-dope in boxing. You try to wear the other person out. Um, I don't know if that's a good idea at this stage in the game uh, because those five players are going to be worn out as well. This is a good idea for Bowling Green, though, to take that timeout because they are tired. I guarantee they are tired. This is their probably third game of the day. Um, heck, when you have a really tough one game, that's all you really need to be tired. So this is their third one. It's a marathon of a day. And so they really did need that break. So I'm pretty – it does look like they made a substitution as well. So uh, there was a female on the team that was in um, – I can't see her number right now. But she had pink uh, uh, socks on. I remember that. But they have subbed her out, I think, for um, someone else, maybe their captain, a CSC on his shirt, uh, number 21 over there in the corner. So I think they have set her out so they can maybe last the rest of this round. Ooh. Oh, Scrubs number uh, two going out for them. Ooh! Wow. So we have a so nice catch. A one catch for an out, and then a team catch as well. So that was a three-player swing there. Um, all the way in the back of BGSU, you can see that this number five who's running around. He is actually not in the game. Uh, you are technically not allowed to go out of the um, the court. You have to have one foot in. At the very beginning of the game, that, that rule is very relaxed because um, there's so many people, and if you go get a ball, it's not a big deal. But when it gets down to like five, six, seven players left, there's usually someone behind them putting the ball back into place. So that's why you see so many balls right on the line, or referees will put balls right on the line, and they, can, they sometimes have to jockey for them, especially if they're in the middle of the court, where number 21 is off to the right here. Oh, God, I can't. Ooh, we have a nice push. You having fun doing the camera? Tons of fun, so much fun. You doing the Zoom thing? Are you doing the Zoom? Heck no, I'm not Zooming. No. Uh, <laughs> chest pass there. There's still four minutes and a half. It's going to be real tough so for BGSU. Point, even if they finish this point, that it'll get carried over to the second half. So you're starting to see this has been a very long game. We had one point in 20 minutes. Um, what number six is doing is he is um, – a, keeping the shot clock down so that they don't have to keep throwing every 10 seconds. Two, he's holding on to two balls at a time so that he can throw one and then block with the other. So that's why he's staying in for so long off to the left there, number six, all the way in the left-hand corner. All right, so obviously BGSU pretty tired now. Look at them, they're hanging back. I mean, even you'll notice uh, Townsend isn't as quick to push up. Now, at this point, I'm not really sure why Townsend is falling back as far as they are. We're calling a shot clock violation, I believe, on BGSU. Uh, they shouldn't because I saw a throw off to the right here. Um, and so I don't know why they're calling a shot clock violation. But it looks like they're, they're hashing it out. The captain with the C on his shoulder means that he's allowed to talk to him. 
generally speaking, you only allow the captain to talk to the referees and otherwise, and the ref has just made his decision. That's all there is to it. All right, so There's a are, lot of people. a shot clock violation there. Was that the call? Yes. Yes, it is. Um, I like what number 29 is doing in the middle. He's kneeling down. Ooh. And he, and, ooh. Captain out, number 21 on the BGSU. It's down to two. This is really tough to watch here because this is a team that knows they're on the ropes. With three and a half minutes left, I really just don't see this happening. Miracles have happened. True, true, true. <laughs> so he's just, he's making him as, himself as small tell, as humanly possible. <laughs> yeah, a little <laughs> bit. Generally, you want to drop to the floor when you're all the way up and you pretend that you're going to jump. But, hey, why not? Making throws to cycle the uh, shot clock. Now the good thing is, as long so now they've got three balls, which means they can make their one throw. Still have two on them. Okay, uh, number twenty. Oh man, number twenty-nine. Throw that one now away. We're in that situation that we said no one wants. He's got two minutes and forty-two seconds. He's got a last. Don't step on your hat and trip and fall. Okay, I thought he was gonna. Do, okay, good. He got it out of the way. That was a little worrisome. Um, nobody wants to be in this situation right now. He's obviously not going to be able to swing a win out of this, but he's going to have players like the Bald Eagle there. Okay, it is. And that is, in fact, an there out. it is. And he is not happy about that. So again, like, just like I said before, you're starting to see emotion is taking a taking a big part in this game. So uh, we'll take a quick break, and we'll be back for point number three. Actually, we'll be back for the second half.